Okay, we're recording. Welcome everybody to our November 18th So What Zoomcast. My name is Linda Hahn and I'm coming to you from Palm Bay, Florida, which is about um, 20 miles south of um, Cape Canaveral on the East Coast. My co-host, Deb Stanley, is coming to you from Matawan, New Jersey, where they're almost in lockdown again. <laughs> and our guest today is Heather Kojan, and she's coming to you from Virgin Maryland. Yes, Baltimore. Baltimore. I knew that. Yeah, I know you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So our broadcast is brought to you in part by Banyan Batiste, by Fox Chapel Publishing, by quiltwoman.com and Cheryl Lynch Quilt. So we want to welcome everybody. Uh, please have a good time. If you have any questions for us or our guests, please put them in the chat and uh, we'll get them to Heather if she doesn't see them. Mm -hmm. We do do our door prizes uh, later on in the broadcast. We have really cool door prizes today. You have to stay through the whole thing. And we're going to ask to see what's in your glass because we're nosy. So it started out right in my glass today. Don't forget when you're in Florida, happy hour starts early. <laughs> uh, I, have, I have Cupcake Savino Blanc. And that's usually left for me on my uh, doorstep by some of my local Zumba girls. So if it's something that you like in your glass, you will get a ding dong. But if you're like Debbie, <laughs> if, if you're like Debbie, what do you, Debbie, what are you drinking? They mold Coke Zero. <laughs> <laughs> get a buzzer. You still get your door prize. It's just I'm going to shame you a little bit. So if you get a door prize, put your email into the chat. And um, usually on Fridays is when we start um, doing all the door prizes. We do record this so you'll be able to see it on our dedicated YouTube channel. So what Zoomcast, and um, you can watch it at your leisure, refer your friends, what have you. <clears throat> so um, did I cover everything? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my friend, Heather Kojan. Let me get rid of our spotlight. Get rid of our spotlight. Hi, Heather. Well, hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I, I don't think I haven't seen you in I feel like years almost. Virginia Beach. Yeah, that was two years ago, right? Already. Yeah. Boy. Oh, Boy. I miss flying during pandemic and all other stuff. Hmm. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I know because I, I saw your room before. I know you got something in your glass. I do. Um, am I supposed to share or keep it a secret? No, I want to see. Oh, yeah. So I have um, some Deep Eddy lemon vodka with iced tea. That looks like a very big glass. Well, it's got a lot of ice in it. I mean, okay. you know. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Woo. Pass Ding the dong for you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. No shaming, no shaming there. <laughs> I have no filter. Delicious. All right. But anyway, why don't you tell us you're from Baltimore. What do you do? Oh my gosh. Um, what do I you do? You look pretty versatile. I, um, like quilt wise, um, I don't know, I guess, I guess most recently I, I teach on zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I do lectures and classes on Zoom. Um, before that, I did them live and in person. Um, I occasionally will write um, patterns for magazines um, in some books. Um, I, I've been in Baltimore for a little over 10 years, and I started the Baltimore Modern Quilt Guild about 10 years ago. 
So I did that. Um, I have a dog. I have a husband, two kids, trying to figure out how Thanksgiving works this year. Um, you know, so just kind of like what all y'all are doing. Same thing, right? Hmm. Yeah. So what's what's kind of like your most recent thing that you're doing? Um, my most recent thing. Um. Well, let's see. Oh, I can show you something. Can I share my screen? You can. I'll show this. Hold on. Where's my... Oh, which one? <laughs> I always get hung up on here. Where? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, that's not is, is this something you're going to be teaching soon, like in January? Um, no, this is not something I'm going to be. Okay. Doing. You're going to show us that later. Oh, yes. I'm going to show you that later. I'm going to, I'm going to do a little demo for you too. Um, which is, should be fun, but what is that? That's not what I wanted to share. <laughs> what the heck is that? Stop that. Sorry about that. Where is it? Here it is. All right. I don't know why that's not working. Why is that not working? Hmm. Well, I'll just show it to you live. Um, so this quilt back in the corner there, um, that is my latest quilt that I have had published. And I was going to actually try to show you the magazine, but I can't find that either because I was going to show it to you on the screen. Anyway, it just came out in Curity Quilts magazine. Um, so I'm super excited about that. And um, it was something very unexpected. I, um, I mean, I, let me try to share it one more time. I don't know why my, my screen sharing is not working. Give it a cookie. Ha, give it a cookie. That'd be a good idea. Uh, let's see, let me try this. What's the name of that magazine? It's called Curated Quilts Magazine. Curated, curated. Curated quilts, yes. All right. Curated. She has an accent. What I do? Yeah. What kind of accent do I have? Not like mine. That's weird. I've never I've never heard that I have an accent before. Very bizarre. All right, I can't figure that out. So we'll just escape there. Oh, there it is. Okay, hold on. Let me go back to here. Let me let me try you one. You know, more people time. actually ask if if I'm from the Midwest. They do? They do. That that I don't get. Yeah. That's bizarre. All right, I think this is going to work in a second. Hopefully. Just keep drinking, gals. I'm I'm almost there. <laughs> and when I start my lecture, they'll say, you know, where you're from? You have an accent. Mm. Okay, okay, there it is. Woo, finally. There we go. Anyway. So that's in, that's in the October um, 2020 magazine of Curated Quilts. It's a lovely magazine. It's more like um, like a really high end, like really um, beautiful paper, you know, big um, format. Um, it's it's gorgeous. Um, can you buy it? You can buy it. Yeah, you can buy it. Um, you know, bookstores, um, la, local quilt stores. You can also get it at curatedquilts.com. I'm gonna um, have my headphones on, so you may not hear me if, I, or I may not hear you if you call me. Um, so you can, um, you can get at newsstands, like I said, or um, you can buy digital or you can buy hard copy. So the quilt, I started making that soon after um, lockdown started. And I was just sewing together scraps, right? Like, so lately all I've been doing is scrap quilts. I seem to have a lot, a lot of scrap quilts. So I uh, sort my scraps either by color or by um, all my salads are together. And I just started sewing this shape and I, I've used this shape before, so it was familiar to me. And I decided I was gonna make a quilt for my niece for her graduation. She graduated from high school and you know, they kind of lost everything, right? They lost their uh, graduation, they lost prom, all the good stuff. So I was gonna make her this quilt. In the meantime, um, my friend Betsy said, hey, Curated Quilts are, is looking for patterns for their next issue. I'm like, yeah, well, I really don't have anything. She goes, oh, come on, you must have something. I'm like, no, I really don't. And she said, well, what about that one quilt? And I'm like, hmm, okay, I could do that. So I sent it to Curated Quilts and they took it and then they put it on the cover of their magazine, which I've never had a magazine cover before. So bucket list, 
Wow, smell you. Not I know. So anyway, if you want the pattern for that, it's actually in the magazine. It's in Curated Quilts magazine. And it's still hanging here. And I really need to send it to my niece because she's been waiting. She's been waiting since May, at least for it. So I, um, I'm going to do it. Definitely do it. So yeah, anyway. Um, so the youth issue for this particular issue, Kim, what they actually have quilts made by kids, really. So they were looking for patterns that were really simple to make. Um, and uh, a lot of um, the whole gallery that they have, like mini quilts, um, are made by by children and some, you know, with assistance from um, parents and grandparents. Um, a lot of it they did on their own, but the whole issue features kids in the magazine. So it's um, it's super, super cool, super fun. All right, am I jumping the gun? I want to know about that pineapple. So, oh no, the pineapple quilt is, I love that. Um, it's just something that um, again, kind of a collaboration with my friend, Betsy. She's very good in electric quilt. I am not very good in electric quilt. Betsy, she's on here, I think, somewhere. Hey, hi, Betsy. I, I, think, she's, I think she's at the dentist. Anyway, um, I started making these pineapple blocks with the um, Creative Grids pineapple trim tool. If you don't have it, it's a fabulous tool. And I just started making these blocks, like lots and lots of these blocks. And then pretty soon I had like 20 of these blocks. So I had this idea. I said, I want to make a quilt out of pineapple blocks that looks like a pineapple. And I emailed this to her. And being the good friend that she is, an hour later, she had a whole mock-up done in, uh, in EQ8 for me. So um, that's how that come, came about. I'm not really teaching it anywhere um, in the near future. Um, but that being said, if you belong to a quilting group or um, you know, a guild, um, or you just have some friends who want to make it, you know, I can always throw it together class. So we have the technology to do that now. Um, so that's, that's the pineapple quilt. Yeah. I call it pineapple squared because it's a pineapple quilt my, made out of pineapple blocks. But if you don't have that tool, it's a great tool. Um, it's great for scrap quilts, which I love and, uh, it's awesome. And you got a string quilt back there. I like that. I have, too. um, so the one behind behind me, that one I call diamonds on a string. And then this blue one here, these I teach quite often. These I'm gonna be teaching at Road to California. I don't know if you wanna talk about that yet, but we can. Okay. Um, and so in Road to California, um, I'm teaching five classes. And I think you've talked about Road before, Linda. Linda has a little association <laughs> with Road to California. <laughs> little bit. And um, so the one behind me is called Diamonds on a String. It's um, a great scrap. Also. I think for this particular one, I have almost like 10 yards of scraps in it. Uh, a little bit of foundation piecing, not any big deal. Um, and then this one right here, um, I call Modern String Quilt. It's kind of pick it up and show it to you. It's, um, I tend, like I said, I tend to color block my quilts, my scraps. So um, this is a big one though. This is a good 72 by 72, but you can do it in, you know, any kind of color scheme you want. I have another little one that I've done um, more in a rainbow color scheme. Um, that particular one, um, I start I, in my, I have a little Etsy store. I'll share some information about that later, but I, uh, January of 2018. So every January I try to start a little project. And I call it the January project, very original. I think a lot of people do it. So my idea for January of 2018 was I, got, I was gonna make one block every day during the month of January. Um, and at first I, you know, I'm just gonna use scraps, right? So I figured, you know what, uh, I'll probably get through, you know, three or four blocks of blue scraps. And then I'll probably run out of blue scraps and then move on to the red scraps and the green scraps. Well, 36 blocks later, and I was still working with the blue scraps because, I mean, like it's only a small bucket, but it just keeps giving and giving and giving. So anyway, that is also um, a great scrap buster as well. Um, let's see, what else am I teaching? So the one here with the big hexagons, um, I call that my Roy quilt. Um, kind of a nod to Roy G. Biv and... Um, there's no um, Y seams in that. It's all straight sewing, just wedges and rainbows and things that I like. I'm gonna do a little, little mini quilt. 
Another wedge quilt, rainbow Dresden mini quilt. So that's another class. And then my other one, let me see if I can find that one for you. Let's try that camera. Ta-da, so that's my um, improv log cabin class. So we just do lots and lots of ways to do improvisation um, with your log cabins. So those are all the ones that I'm doing at Road to California. So um, hopefully you can come. Anybody can come. You don't have to be in California. You can be anywhere. You got a mute mom here. A couple coming in. Well, and everybody muted. <laughs> Hello, puppies. So um, I do a lot of scrap quilts, and I, I have a little demo for you guys today if you want like a little, a little block demo, and it kind of leads into my giveaway as well. So you want to do that maybe? We would love that, but I want to know, how, how do you organize your scraps? Um, in buckets, and <laughs> not, not very artfully. So um, like by color, by yeah, size? Yeah, by color, yeah. No, by color. So this is, this is all the greens right here. Um, I'm working on a version of, where is it? I'm working on a version of this one with green as the um, pieced parts and then navy as the background. Um, so I'm teaching that one, you know, fairly often, I'm teaching it at, um, at Rhodes. So I'm not quite ready to finish it yet, but yeah, this is how I organize them. So I just have, you know, the major color groups. Again, I sort my solids separately and then anything else um, like Christmas fabric, I'll keep that together. There's not a whole lot of it. Um, I have a bucket kind of of things that don't go any place else. Uh, and I actually for that quilt behind me, that diamond quilt, that's a great use for those because um, it's great for ones that just really don't fall into any color family. They, you know, like for large scale prints that you cut down, um, it's good for that. Do, yeah, what I was going to ask. Ah. Okay. I'll just have some more wine. I'll remember in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I do your demo. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I love, um, I love doing scrap quilts and I usually have a few going on, you know, at the same time, like the one behind me, I'm starting another version of that. I have another scrappy pineapple quilt going on. Um, but this is a shape that is super easy. Um, and Jill had asked, do I cut the scraps to size? Um, not often, unless I'm going to specifically work on something like this. It'll hopefully make sense in a second. So I'm going to, um, pop over here to a different camera so you can see what I'm doing. And this is what we do in classes. I mean, I'm just, oh, there, there's, okay, I usually don't have a cocktail with me, so I'm gonna move that over so I don't knock it over. Goodbye, you stay over there. Um, so let me show you the block first, and it's super easy. I mean, it's, um, I call this a scrap tangle block because it's a rectangle and it's made of rectangles. I love that. And it's all scrappy, right? So this is what the block is going to look like. The starting point can be charm squares. It can be um, just cutting things from your scraps. It can be leftover jelly roll strips. The size that we want for each of the individual pieces is just two and a half by four and a half. And if we cut everything two and a half by four and a half, it all magically works together and fits. Um, this is a great beginner. Um, block or quilt, I would say, or it's also good if you just like to do mindless sewing, which sometimes, you know, especially if you're having a cocktail, you want to do mindless sewing. You don't want to have to think about things too much. So um, as I'm going through, if I know I'm going to make another one of these, and honestly, um, what I do is I just fill up this little bucket. This is like leftover from, I think mushrooms came in here, but I washed out. So once this gets to be, gets to be overflowing, I know that it's enough to make um, to make a decent sized quilt. So I only <laughs> I only have these two little ones left. So I'm gonna have to fill that bucket back up. But um, the starting point is two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. If you have a lot of charm squares, um, you can definitely make this um, from charms. What I would suggest, though, 
if you're going to do charms, there's a cutting method that I like, like to follow because we want to cut this into two pieces, right? Uh, but the first piece, the first cut I would do on this one is I would cut it at two and a half inches. I'll flip that around so that if you're looking at the numbers, it makes sense. So I'm going to cut that at two and a half inches, but I want these to be two and a half by four and a half. So I'm going to, if I had a rotating cutting mat now, that would be awesome. I think I do somewhere. I just don't know where it is. And then I'm going to cut it to four and a half. So there and there. I don't cut the half inch off first um, because when I do that, then sometimes I cut it the wrong way and I end up with like a four inch piece and a two inch piece. And it's not really what I want. So anyway, that's how I would cut a charm square. But the starting point is a bunch of these. So to start with, you just sew two together, just like that, boom and boom. Then the next thing you're gonna do, orientate, orient that that way, is you're going to sew another rectangle on the top and another rectangle on the bottom, okay? And you'll notice there's nothing to match. There's no seams to match right now, which is why I like it. Um, quarter inch seam allowance throughout, obviously. Um, you know, I'm gonna swap out one of those colors. And you can, keep, you know what? Usually when I'm making this, I'm literally just pulling at random, um, but I will curate it a little bit sometimes if, um, if I don't particularly like what I just pulled out. So the next little bit is I just sew a bunch of these rectangles together in pairs um, on the short end. So you're gonna need one, two, four of those, no, six of those um, for the last little bit. So just, and honestly, if I'm working at these, at um, like making a quilt, I will do maybe like, I don't know, work on 10 to 20 of these at a time and just sew pairs, you know, 20 of those. Then I'll add the next little bit and then the next little bit. And so the great thing about that is when you're done, you have 20 blocks made and that's really fun. So the next little bit is adding these pieces on the side. So I'm gonna just kind of approximate here with seam allowance. And also notice there's no, nothing needs to match. No seams need to match, which is fantastic. Um, I think I'll add this one next. Um, and this is also a great place to hide some ugly fabrics. And if this is your favorite fabric, I apologize. Um, for me, I don't like it so much, but you can bury some ugly fabrics in here, which is also um, a bonus in my book. That's my, from my fabric collection. Oh my gosh. And I was just <laughs> saying how I'm so sad that I'm out of that fabric. <laughs> I really wish I had some some more of that fabric, really. I knew I, I knew I was going to get in trouble somehow. I just knew it. I knew it. No, it's not. Okay, true. I'm, honestly, I okay. So this is I'll, I'm just going to pop back to myself for a second because this is this is kind of a funny story. So back in the day, so I'm going back like 20 years ago. I read an article in some quilt magazine that said, um, you know, evaluate your stash and look for holes in your stash, like where you don't have a certain color. I'm like okay, I'll do that. And so I evaluated my stash. And in my stash, there were no purples in my stash, right? I was living in Virginia Beach at the time. Um, a friend of mine drove up to Northern Virginia. We went to G Street Fabrics. So if anybody of you know G Street Fabrics. Um, so back when, I, I think there was like a breaking point, like when G, before G Street was good and then after when it was not so good, I don't know, because everybody says, oh, you know, it, it used to be really good. I think it was when it was still really good. So I go to G Street Fabrics and I find all these purples, like, you know, great quilt and cottons, you know, and they're really inexpensive and I load up on them. And guess what? I never use purple. That's why there was a hole in my stash. That's why I have all these purples left over from 20 years ago because I don't use them. Anyway. That was my that was my sad little stash building story. Okay, so um, so the next little bit here. Let me move these up a little bit so we have some more room. Then we're just going to add this way, right? So we're going to add a strip this way, and we're going to add a strip this way. And at this point, you can stop. This comes out to be a rectangle. Um, eight and a half by 12 and a half. If you wanted to uh, keep going with this, you could certainly do that. 
then you can just start adding three at a time. So then you would sew strips of three. See, there's another one of those purples, although I like that one a little bit better. So then you start adding three at a time, right? And you can keep going until, it's, see, I wouldn't put all those reds together. Heavens to Betsy, no. Um, okay, these. Um, so this would make it, bring it back to square, right? And just keep going and going and going. Um, I actually have, um, we're, okay, any questions on that, on that little demo before I switch away from it? Probably not, it's super easy. But what's great, if you'll notice though, nothing has to match. You know, you do need to use, you know, a pretty consistent seam allowance, but um, other than that, there's no, there's no seams to line up. It's fantastic. So very, very mindless fun sewing. I'll show you a quilt that I just put together with it. Um, anyway, this is what a block looks like, a rectangle block. If you so desire, I'm ready, I'm ready to start another one. But the other day I put together um, this top using a bunch of these blocks. And I had enough, which, um, the size of um, the block that I have here is eight and a half by 12 and a half. But if you added three, you know, a, a section of three this way, three this way, it would make it 12 and a half, um, Barbara. So anyway, so I just put a bunch of these together in a quilt top and there's that. So I put, <laughs> this is funny. I put sashing um, on the blocks only on two sides, right? So on this one, I just put sashing, two inch sashing, it's hard to do upside down, two inch sashing on this side, two inch sashing on this side. So you cut them two and a half by 12 and a half. Um, and that brings it back to a square, right? To a 12 and a half inch square. So, um, and then I alternated them uh, when I laid them out so you can see um, this one, the, um, the sashing is going horizontally. The next one here, 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 here. Uh, the sashing is going vertically. So I had this all laid out on the floor and uh, I showed my husband, I said, hey, you know, what do you think of that? And he said, oh, I like the dividers that you put into it. <laughs> like <laughs> the dividers? <laughs> He said, yeah, yeah, like that white stuff that you put in, be in between them, the divider said, oh yeah, we call that sashing, but that's cute, thank you. So anyway, the dividers um, are alternating on this one. Anyway, um, I have more detailed directions written up um, in a pattern. Whoops. I call it scrap tangle. There's actually three different um, patterns that you can make. If you look at this one right here, you can see my dog. There's Chase. Hello, Chase. Um, so it has, you know, more complete um, directions with it. So, all right, there's a little block demonstration for you. There you go. Go make a quilt now, right? Who's going to cut up all their fabric into two and a half by four and a half inch squares? Oh, oh me. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So who does your quilting? Um, most of my quilting I send out to a friend of mine, um, Claudia Chapman. She's, um, pretty local to me. Um, she's in my guild. Um, her business is called Roundabout, Roundabout Quilting. Um, and, um, yeah, so I don't, <laughs> did you hear that? Um, I don't quilt most, I mean, I may quilt this size. I don't know. Um, most of, most of my quilts are like about 72 inches or larger. If it's a baby size quilt, I'll quilt that. Um, if it's a mug rug, I'll quilt that. But um, if it's much bigger, I tend to send it out. Um, a lot of the stuff I do though, it's, it's all just edge to edge. It's just class samples mostly, um, or it's quilts we're gonna use or quilts I'm gonna give away. So like if I'm gonna give away a quilt, I just gave away a quilt you know, for a wedding gift. I'm not going to get like a super intricate design on something that I'm going to give away. Um, I'm just like that. So um, yeah, just edge to edge usually just to hold the layers together. Um, I mean, I can technically quilt. I, I know how to, um, but it's not my favorite thing. I'd rather, I'd rather piece. I, I just rather piece all day long. So yeah. <clears throat> Although so, once I get in the groove of it, I, I do tend to enjoy it. It's just, I got to make myself get in the groove. You know, I, I got to, I got to make that leap. 
Yeah. So I heard that um, Mid Appalachian is canceled for 2021. I know. I know. Yeah. I mean, so that's that's when I think we were. I was going to see you next. Yeah. It's it's a shame. Um, defend it. It's. It's a great little conference, you know, usually draws about 300 quilters every year. So hopefully in 2022, but that's where I first met Linda and Cheryl Lynch and, um, and Joyce Hughes, you know, all, all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I met her. That's where I met the gang. Um, yeah. I, I Joyce is on here somewhere. That's like one of the first places I ever taught at too. So I was like very intimidated because um, all these, uh, you know, like big name quilters were there. I'm like, oh, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing here. It worked out, you know, it's fine. You have I'm, come I'm a very, long like, way. I make it kind of person, you know? You, you have come a long way. You have worked hard and, and I'm very proud of you. I really oh, am. Thank you. Thank you, friend. I, knew, I can say I knew you when. Yeah, maybe, sure. Yeah. Scary, now, scary stuff. You didn't find that picture, did you? No, you know what? I looked oh. for it. I looked for it. I last time I, I was on um on the show, not on the show, when I was a guest, not a guest, a participant. She threatened me. I didn't threaten you. No, I think the I think you're I I think that's wrong. Maybe I did. But I thought I had an incriminating photo of um it would basically if you can just picture Linda wandering around at 6 a.m. with her nightgown like on the campus of Mount St. Mary's College. That was it. Did I have my Viking helmet on? No, no, this was in the morning. No, no, oh. no, no, this was, this was put away. No, but yeah, I, re I do recall that also. <laughs> in the evening. About your bathrobe. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, you made me get rid of that one. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I had this, it, it was my dad. And you know, everybody oh, has know a nasty old bathrobe that you just can't throw away. It, it's like horrible. And um, Deb, Deb would get really mad, especially if we were going somewhere together and I had this cruddy blue plaid bathrobe. I called it my Tony Soprano bathrobe. And I, I walked around everywhere with it. <laughs> And I, I took it with me and she finally bought me a new one. Oh, just throw that out. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I did. You did? Okay, good. I got another different cruddy one. Uh, Cause I, you know what people do? They, they put those things into t-shirt quilts. Yeah. Just make, a, make a teddy bear out of it or oh, something. A teddy bear, right. So you'll have it for always. Yeah. I just I just finished making a t-shirt quilt. Well, not finished. I mean, I've just finished making a top, like a, a t-shirt quilt top. My husband has been asking me literally for 10 years for one. And so finally, I, I just finally had the time. It took a pandemic, but I got it done. So uh, that's off with the quilters right now too. Those are a beast. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to quilt that one. So we're, we're excited to see you at um, Road to California. Yes, me too, definitely. And um, you guys can register at Road to California. You go into the website and you can search for Heather's name. You can also search for me. <laughs> you can search you for all of us. All of us. Yeah. And uh, we have Joyce Hughes, Patty Carey. And there, there's a whole bunch of previous guests uh, teaching at Road this year. Linda packed the uh, the faculty with all her friends, I think, this year, right? <laughs> well, that's where I got all the guests. That's, that's why we're taking a break for Christmas, because I got to make new friends. <gasps> I don't for Christmas, believe I'm going to make some new that. friends. <laughs> I don't believe that. No. So hang in there, Heather. I'm, ha I'm, I'm me... hanging for sure. I need to find something I wanted to give you all. Um, is it this one? No. I'm going to take you off spotlight for a minute. Take me off spotlight for a second. I got I got to okay, well, look looking for something for real quick because I was going to give you um, my contact information, but I need to um, I need to pop over and do something real quick. Is it right okay. here? I hope you guys noticed that we're makeup today. Ah, we won't say what I didn't wear, 
but I did wear a yoke ring. Anyway, um, coming up for us is the last class of the year for me. Celtic interlaces, I have enough kits for two more spots. And you make the knots independently and you can take them and put them around the collar of a shirt or a hem of a skirt on a tote bag. So you can do um, a lot of stuff with them. The other thing I'm gonna do in December is um, a lecture, it's a professional um, development lecture, and it's going to talk to you about teaching a Jill, you're a sucker. I love you. Um, it's a professional development lecture, and it talks about teaching. I'm also doing this at Road to California, and uh, at Road to California, I'm doing two different New York Beauty classes, the famous grab. I will give you crabs. Not the itchy kind, but I will give you crabs. And you'll even get a button that you can wear that says, I got crabs from Linda Hahn. I know you want that. So um, you go on to Road to California and you can register for classes from um, many of our past guests besides just me. 